Hello, and welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. I'm out here in the shop today working on the new um, outer panel for the right wing. Uh, this is one of the new lighter weight panels. Saves about a pound over the old ones. Uh, I'm about half done with this one. Uh, you know, it might look like it's, oh, completely framed up, almost ready to go, but I always like to say, if you feel like you're 80% done, you're really about half done. <laughs> and so may, maybe I'm going to ride here. If I say this is half done, maybe it's only a third done. Uh, but actually, by the uh, end of next week, it should be uh, almost completely done, if not completely done. Might need covering. Uh, so I'm getting close. Uh, the left one's already done. Uh, you saw that previously. Uh, but I thought I'd take a break from what I'm doing here. I'm going to put on rib cap strips in a little bit here. But I thought I'd take a break and show you our new arrival. And it weighs about the same as a new baby. This is uh, the new parachute system for the glider right here. And uh, it's in a nice carbon fiber canister. This comes out of Italy. Um, and it's pretty cool. Uh, this weighs eight and a half pounds. So yeah, just about the same as a new baby. A big baby. <laughs> um, so, uh, I bought this as the emergency reserve parachute system for the wing. And I think I've showed some pictures previously of how it's going to mount. Yikes! I'm in tight spaces and this is a little heavy. Uh, eight and a half doesn't seem like much until you start handling it. The carbon fiber is a little slippery. Uh, so, uh, how it works, this is a pneumatic uh, ballistic parachute system. And I'm going to provide a, a link in the description down below uh, where you can go uh, look at this system in more detail and they have some cool deployment videos there but basically what it is is it's a standard conical uh, reserve parachute that is sized for my gross weight and uh, it is deployed pneumatically uh, I believe that they use nitrogen it says that it's air but really uh, anybody that's building these would use nitrogen because it's dry and wouldn't cause other problems and that, the nitrogen, I'm assuming it's nitrogen, is at this end of the unit down here. There's a release mechanism here to release the nitrogen. And uh, there's a little inspection window here so you can, oh, you can see it. There's a little inspection window here uh, so you can check the mechanics and make sure that they're not corroding or anything weird like this. This uh, red cover is plastic. And there's four, four screws here, three, five, five screws that allow you to remove that cover and do servicing. Uh, although, uh, I wouldn't do that at home. <laughs> you risk deploying it. Uh, and then over on this side, there's a pressure gauge that you can check before you fly to make sure that it has proper pressure. It uses, uh, according to my conversion, it uses uh, 2,350 PSI. So, a lot. Um, that's why I say probably nitrogen, because a standard nitrogen tank would have... Uh, 3,000 PSI, so you could easily pressurize this. And inside this thing, inside the container, I don't know how thick the wall is on this container, uh, but probably more than it needs to be for me. Actually, this whole unit uh, is built very sturdy, very durable, um, and I think it probably exceeds what I actually need for my glider, uh, but it's the smallest, lightest weight one that I could find on the market. Um, inside, there is a bag, a deployment bag, that contains the parachute. And that deployment bag is actually tapered slightly. It's wider at the bottom here than at the top. So that when the uh, nitrogen is released all at once, I assume they use like a burst disc of some kind. So, boom, out it goes. And that causes, it's like a bullet, that causes the bottom of the deployment bag to flare out slightly and seal tight to the cylinder. And then the whole thing goes out the end as a slug, the bag and so forth. But as it exits, there's a little pull strap uh, that is secured to the inside of the canister and uh, ends up at the deployment bag. There's a series of pins on the deployment bag. And as the deployment bag exits the container, it pulls those pins out and splits open the side of the deployment bag so that the parachute can then deploy. Um, it will throw uh, the parachute slug about 15 feet maximum. And uh, they do supply a bridle that connects onto here, which is obviously the top of the parachute. I might pick a lighter weight D-ring to put on here. Uh, and this will, oh, interesting. 
I haven't completely inspected the whole thing yet. It just got here. Um, it would go 15 feet and then the chute is uh, free for the deployment bag to begin to open. Um, I'm going to attach the 15 foot bridle that they provided me here and then I'm going to run the other end of it to the Y bridle that I've set up on my pilot's cage. Uh, this will lower both me and the glider together, although there's dual, dual sets of straps. There's a set of straps that holds this to the glider and another set of straps that go to me. So. Uh, no matter what happens, if the glider completely disintegrates, it's still connected to me. Uh, and we hope we never get near any of that stuff. And at this end, it's got a plastic cover, and it's got some frangible lines here. I assume how this works is that one, uh, because it's such an instantaneous release of pressure, that these little nylon cords snap, and the cover goes flying off. And this is a really well-built system. It is extreme. It looks extremely durable. Uh, it's got, mine has a three foot cable. You can spec out this cable. You can say how much bridle you want up to 15 feet and you can specify the length of the cable, the release cable. Uh, and for my application, this is way overbuilt. Uh, this is, uh, all of the components are too big and too heavy for what I really need. Uh, but they built something that you can probably knock around and have around for years and years and years, never need maintenance. Uh, and no matter what you do with it, nothing goes wrong. They were very kind to provide in this system uh, a locking mechanism. There's a safety pin on here that you remove before flight. Let's see if I can get this a little bit closer. Uh, it's a U-shaped safety pin that goes around the handle. It's right, oh, excuse me, it's, that's one end of it here and then it goes around the other side, goes through here. So it goes through two holes in the handle here right here and over here. Um, and what you do is, uh, this is a key lock. You can uh, unlock the lock and take that off and then it's partially armed and to complete arming it, uh, you remove these little flags and the uh, safety pin. You pull out that safety pin and then the system's activated and, and ready to use. All you have to do is uh, pull on this baby and I hear it takes uh, three, four pounds of pull. Uh, in an emergency, I'm sure my ability to pull will exceed 50 pounds or more, <laughs> all of my body weight, and, and it'll happen very fast. So uh, it's got a nice handle you can grab onto here. I'm going to mount this on the pilot's cage such that to activate the parachute, I just reach up and pull down like this. And uh, it, it's well set up for that. It's got the 90 degree curve on it. Uh, you can get a straight one also. Uh, they have a variety of ways that you can order this thing. Uh, the link to the, uh, their website will help you uh, check out these systems. I gotta admit, for what it is, this is an extremely well made system. All the engineering and parts manufacturing, very precise, high end stuff. Uh, really high, high quality aircraft uh, construction. It's a really good deal. Uh, some ballistic parachutes, which are next to impossible to get in the United States unless you have a pyrotechnic license uh, can run you four to six thousand dollars. This unit was two thousand dollars, which to me seemed like a bargain because you can spend uh, oh you easily spend twelve thirteen hundred dollars just on the parachute. Uh, so to get this whole system for that kind of money, it's a really good deal. Um, I hope to never use it. I hope it, on my final day this thing is still in the container just like this, never been used. Uh, but if I have to uh, use it, better to have it than not have it. Uh, as my wife put it, she says, oh, $2,000. Hmm. She thought for a moment, she goes, cheap insurance. <laughs> I go, yeah, there you go, cheap insurance. Uh, so pretty nifty little system. I recommend that you go to their website and check it out. And uh, the fact that I was able to get this thing is thanks to folks like you out there that make your uh, generous pledge every month to the program and help fund uh, critical items like this.